Most of us think crime is rising, yet we're told crime numbers are coming down. So how likely are we to become a victim of violent crime? What happened? I was spotted. The lines and the music split down the split everywhere. Why? There's no reason. I'm Nick Ross, and I'm on a journey to find out the truth about crime. How much crime do we even know about? Police figures are almost hopeless when it comes to measuring violent crime. And what can we do to stop it? I think you can halve the number of injuries. I don't think you'll halve it in a year. I don't think you'll halve it in five years. I think that in a generation, you might do it. We've set up a unique experiment. We're taking one city and swamping it with cameras for a fortnight. We're filming around the clock with the police, the fire service and at the hospital to build up a comprehensive picture of crime. And more than filming with them, we're collecting their data too. We're going to count all the crimes we find and we're not just using the official figures. We're going to meet residents, get teenagers' perspectives, and carry out our own questionnaire to find the crime that goes unreported. Then we'll map it to reveal what crime in one city really looks like. We're calling it our crime audit. Behind the crime numbers are individual human stories. We'll be following the victims over the coming months to see how they're treated by the police, the prosecutors, and the courts. And beyond the criminal justice system, we'll see what could be done to prevent crime from happening in the first place. Meanwhile, another vivid pattern is emerging from our audit. Violence going on behind closed doors. What's interesting is that is the number of cases where people are ringing 999 to ask the police to sort out things that are happening in their homes. Um, some of these just sound like noisy arguments, but quite a few are really nasty. The majority of your jobs are domestic related. For some reason in distress or something, and they're not able to talk, and sometimes you do get silent calls. But we're, you know, fully trained in that. You know, we can say, you know, if you can't talk, tap, tap the headset and the old handset if you need any kind of assistance. Domestic violence takes up a lot of police time. We've mapped all the domestic incidents where the police had to get involved. This is a whole year's worth, and it shows up some intriguing patterns. Domestic problems start over the breakfast table before the school and working day begins. Things are fairly constant through the day, building up again when people start returning home. But the real problem comes later, around pub closing time. Fights and rows then peak between midnight and 2am. And dealing with it is often deeply frustrating for police. By the time police arrive, the man has gone, and the woman refuses to tell them who he is. Very disappointing. Absolutely nothing. I've seen nothing. She's a bit reluctant to make any formal complaint at the moment. This is um, quite a question case. And it turns out it's not just women. The next call is from a man who says he was beaten by his wife. What happened tonight then? You had an argument? No, not that. When I came home, because she yesterday she beat me, two days she beat me, she hit me very badly. I said, please, don't touch me because I'm already scared. Because she said, if you tell anything to the police, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill myself. The man's wife denies it all. And, as is so often the case, it's highly confusing. She's eventually arrested and taken in for questioning, but no charges are brought. Remember, we've chosen Oxford because its crime patterns are typical of the rest of the country. Scenes like these are being played out up and down the length of Britain. Surprisingly, according to the British Crime Survey, the country's biggest annual report on our experiences and feelings about crime, Two in every five victims of domestic abuse are men. 
and men or women, they often demand an emergency response. So what's happened here? Do we, I mean, are we noted about to do anything more than that? The only report that we've got is that it's a, a male who was assaulted a female at the location. When the air quiets down a bit, we might be able to get some history out of the arts for previous details of the address and give it a bit, bit more information to work with when we get there. But they've, they've classed this as, a, as a, a domestic assault in progress, that's a real emergency for you. Okay. Thames Valley Police give these call-outs the highest priority, and they help to cool things down. But it's often hard for them to take matters further. He's gone. He's gone. People rarely press charges, and anyway, it's usually his word against hers. Yes, yeah, so. She's struggling to explain the whole circumstances, but I think they've had some sort of argument. Why, why is she struggling to explain? And um, thought she's had a little drink. I was thinking to see those two have enjoyed a few drinks, which is exacerbated the circumstances. A, a lot to drink. Yeah. Quite a bit. You know, yeah. It's not the back, which is difficult trying to, trying to get the circumstances. But they've had some form of argument. Um, yeah. He's he's then decided to punch her twice in the face. She's got a bit of a lump under her eye. That's okay. Go on.